My name is Ilham Askia, and I am the Executive Director of Gideon's Promise. Gideon's Promise, we are a nonprofit organization that recruits, trains, and supports public defenders all across the country working in under-resourced offices, many of which who um, provide legal services to low-income individuals, um, mostly people of color, um, disproportionately number of people of color that come through the criminal justice system. We were started um, 14 years ago because we saw a need in the system that we needed to provide zealous advocates for, for folks who were going through the system and stop the processing of people into prison cells. And so we believe public defenders humanize their clients, they tell the story of their clients, and therefore the courts and other administrators of justice will see our clients differently and would actually have just outcomes for them. So we started the organization because we knew that they were really great lawyers, people coming right out of law school who wanted to do great work and be public defenders. But the way the system is currently set up, they were leaving early, um, they were uh, experiencing burnout, and sometimes even became very indifferent to their clients. And so we wanted to change that process. We wanted to keep people who really cared about this work in the profession. And so we provide support for, for those public defenders. So that's why Gideon's Promise started. It really started to fulfill the promise of the 1963 U.S. Supreme Court decision, Gideon v. Wainwright, which says that a lay person should not be able to represent themselves but against the mighty arm of the government. They should get a lawyer regardless of their ability to pay. And so for us, although the, the, the law says that a, a, a low-income individual should receive a lawyer, the type of lawyer they get is important. And so we believe until the promise of Gideon is met, our organization, Gideon's Promise, will continue. excited because first of all I'm a former educator I'm excited about this collaborative teaching because I don't get it oftentimes to talk to undergraduate graduate students about criminal justice reform I get to speak nationally but to really be with other educators who are really um, interested in, in, in teaching and exposing and raising awareness about criminal justice reform to students all across the country just it just it warms my heart so i'm very excited to talk to everyone um, and and i'm very grateful for this this opportunity this collaboration um me for me personally um gives the ability for me to tell my story. So I came into this criminal justice space, I'm a former educator, but how I ended up in the criminal justice reform space is I'm a child of a formerly incarcerated person. So when I started to work with public defenders, it was really important for me to make sure that if for some chance, young people or young people's parents ended up in the system, they ended up with a quality public defender, a, qual a, qual a public defender that really cared about them. Because that did not happen in my father's case many, many years ago. So it's very personal that I do this work. It's very personal that I explain the importance of public defenders. And so that's why, I'm, why I agreed to do this. I think the protests that are happening are very important. They're raising awareness of, and what our founder, Jonathan Rapping, says is for, for the violence that you see in the street of police killing unarmed black men, that same violence, if a person actually survives an encounter, ends up and transfers into the courtroom, into the system. And so we can't forget about what happens if someone is arrested survives an encounter, is in, uh, sent to the jail, and then is given a public defender to represent them. And the consistent processing and over-sentencing of poor people, disproportionately people of color, needs to end. So that same violence you see in the streets is also perpetrated in a different way in the courtrooms. And so that's what we have been really um, working with our public defenders all across the country because they realize in this Black Lives Movement that they're very, the clients that they serve fall victim to the same 
um, um, same issues that people feel in impacted communities. And so it is really important that we shed a light that it transfers from one place to the other. I was so pleased to see in the beginning of June all the protests around the world. First of all, they, the eyes are watching the United States of America. And I do think we as a country have an opportunity to change things. A lot of people say, you know, that we need to have, you know, criminal justice reform. We, we, the, the, the criminal legal system needs to change. I, I believe personally it needs to be dismantled and we need to look at it again. And so right now I'm hopeful I wouldn't be in nonprofit work and, 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 and be the ED of a nonprofit that really picked a cause that I think is one of the most challenging causes of our time. And so I'm hopeful that now more and more people, especially young people, are recognizing that they need they too can help and do something. So I will always remain hopeful. I, I plan to stay in this work a very, very long time. And I'm really excited about the next generation of criminal justice reformers that are coming because this recent movement um, to support Black lives. For students who will be viewing this and participating is if you do anything, you know, make sure you do something that gives you purpose and you make sure you do something and, uh, that provides service for others, right? For, uh, former Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm said, uh, service is the rent you pay for time here on this earth. And as the, that is really how I live my life. And I, I say the same thing to my children. And so I'm so excited that young people are, are interested in this work and please just do something that gives you meaning and purpose.